welcome to the inaugural uh, Ray Peacock podcast, the inaugural one, that means the first. Um, I'm Ray Peacock, hello, good afternoon, or good morning, or good evening, depending on where you listen to this. Um, I'm here today with my uh, my little friend, Raji James. Hello. There he is over there, on mic number four. Um, mic two. I'm on mic one, and you're on mic four. Who's on the other two? It doesn't matter. Um, little Roger James. Oh, to give you your full title, Little Roger James, who used to be on EastEnders but ruined it. Thank you very much. Which is now the official title for you. Yeah. I think you work well. quite well. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, ordinarily, we would also have Steve Morrison with us, um, but unfortunately, Steve can't be here today. Um, he's been. Uh, it's actually it's a bit of a downer to start the uh, the first podcast on, but. He's been in a terrible car accident. Um, what? Yeah, an awful car accident. Really? Yep. There, uh, I, I believe. What time is it now? Yeah, they'll be they'll be operating on him as we speak. Uh, the last I heard, they were going to uh, attempt to save the other leg. <laughs> You're joking. Is what I is what I heard. You um, said so, so. Steve suddenly come here today. You said he had something better to do. <laughs> no, I didn't say that at all. Um, now Steve's working today, um, and because uh, we had to find a window for me and you two to get together, um, because we're both so very busy. Um, what with custody of children and that sort of thing, um, but you know we we had to do it today. So so we're recording the first one today. So apologies if it's a bit shit, but you can see the tools I have to work with here, uh, or the tool I have to work with here. I, I've only got Raji James to bounce off today. Only me and Steve Morrison. You want to hear us together? It's honestly it's brilliant. We sort of bounce it all gag 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 gag. Well, thank you, Ray. But what's the podcast about but, today? But me, well done on calling me Ray, by the way, because you know me as Ian. Ray Peacock is my stage name. And you know me as Ian, so I was going to say at the top that, you know, occasionally I might be referred to as Ian, and don't let that confuse you because that is my real name. But, you know, because this is a, a, a performance medium, and because this is, you know, this is a professional, uh, what would you call it, venture, then I'll be referred to as Ray. Good. And it's called the Ray Peacock Podcast as well, uh, which makes sense. But anyway, I'm, I'm sorry if it's a bit shit, um, but it's Raji's fault if it is. Thank you. <laughs> Excuse me. And also, the other thing is as well. I also need to apologise because I, I'm very, very tired indeed. I'm Why? Upset. I've been up all night long. I, I got up at, I think, 2, 2 o'clock yesterday. And I've been up ever since. I've been up... Because my neighbours next door, I must speak quietly because my neighbours might be able to hear us. Because uh, this hasn't been recorded in a flash studio or anything. This has been recorded where, are you? Well, it's your conservatory. In my conservatory. But do bear in mind, ladies, that I've got a conservatory. Um, so we're in the conservatory at the moment. The acoustics are fantastic. Um... Purpose built in many ways this, for a podcast, uh, but yeah, there, there's a, a baby lives next door. Right, I think there's other people there as well. <laughs> it's not baby on its own. It's just a baby. Right. Although from from the noise it made last night, it could have just been a baby. It, it was crying an awful lot last night. Well, babies do that. I know they do that, but that doesn't help me when I've got a podcast to record today. And and, and the other problem with when my baby's crying, you can't complain. You can't go around there and go, "Can you turn that baby off?" You well, can, no, because obviously can you the, turn that baby down? Because the parents are obviously going to be trying to do that. Obviously, well, I presume they are. But it did sound like they were sticking pins in it. Is what is, is basically what it sounded like to me. And, and you know that thing because I did try and sleep at some point. And you know that thing you get when you have a monotonous noise. You've got a noise that's going on, and, go, and the more you you concentrate on that noise, the louder it becomes to your head. So you're trying to sleep, but all you can hear is the noise. Yeah, but that can work the other way. How? Well, when there's like a constant noise, your body gets used to it. So it's like <laughs> if you were sleeping in like I sleep really well in the city, right? But I don't sleep very well in the country because there's no noise. Are you suggesting that the sound of a crying baby could lull me to sleep? Well, well, obviously no. I mean, what I'm trying to say is that when when there's a constant sound, you know, your body your body gets used it was, to it. It wasn't a constant sound. It wasn't a constant noise. It wasn't white noise. It wasn't going. The, the baby wasn't going. Eh. It was going like a baby does, like. Eh, 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 eh. You know, I know, you know what, what babies, babies do. Yes, I do know what babies sound like. Like babies do traditionally. Yes, well, I do have two of my own. Okay. So you've got two babies. No, well, I have two children. They okay. were babies. All right. Were well, they babies once? Yes, of course. Okay, but they've grown up a little bit now. Yes. Yeah, I got you. Okay. So that's <laughs> so that was going to lull me to sleep. No, but look, it's like you know when you're in the city and yeah, foot whale noise, foot whale noises, <laughs> whale song, foot rap. <laughs> Tell you what the way forward is. The way forward is yeah, 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 yeah. You'll be off like a shot, fast asleep like a shot. No bother. You can. There's a gap in the market, there's Raji. You should stay over tonight and get your dictaphone out. <laughs> With you For fuck's sake. Out. When you can hear something, I hate it. When you can hear something when you're asleep, and it just draws attention to itself, and you can hear nothing but that. It's like when I was in Edinburgh last year, when I stayed up in Edinburgh last year uh, for the festival, or the Fringe, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, when I was staying there, the house I was staying at, next door to that house, every morning, nine o'clock, 
the gentleman there would, a, a Scottish gentleman, I presume, would put on what I can only describe as, as ludicrous Scottish music. Ludicrous. Yeah, ludicrous Scottish music. The sort of music that you would imagine that Scottish people don't really listen to. It's just what other people think they would listen to. The sort of stuff that they fucking stream into gift shops to sort of hypnotise tourists into buying Nessie snow domes or whatever, <laughs> or whatever, whatever they sell. But not the sort of thing that a genuine Scottish person would listen to. And they listen to it every single morning. And I'd been up late at night as well. <laughs> I'd, I'd been up my show and it started at 11 o'clock. And I worked through from 11 till 12 for my show. And then 12.30 to the early hours of the morning was comparing the free beer show. I mean, I was tired, Raji. Very, very tired. I was, I was a visitor in their country. And I didn't feel I was mad. <laughs> feel that I was made welcome. But I'm sure that he was trying to make me feel welcome with a Scottish fucking bagpipe well, maybe shit. that's what he was doing at the end of the day. He, he, he lives there and you're a guest. No, he... I don't know why anybody would want to listen to it. But if you are going to listen to it, it should be your choice to listen to it. It shouldn't be um, imposed on a, a guest, in, as I was. He should have known this. I was a guest in his country and he should have extended, like I do with you. Like I, ex I extend the hand of friendship to you. <laughs> I, I extend the hand to, <laughs> to foreigners like yourself who've, who've come to this Again. country. Come over here, and a lot of people give you grief. I, d I, I extend my hand of friendship to but, you. But right, 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 as you well know. <laughs> and, <laughs> I've got to be careful here, because you're going to get into trouble. No. People are going to get the wrong idea of you, because at the end of the day, you know and I know that I was born here. And, and I've uh, not seen any proof of that. <laughs> I don't know that. And either way, do you know what, Roger? It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter whether you were born well, here or not. Well, that's lovely. It doesn't matter. To, I'm not from immigration. <laughs> I'm not going to get you into trouble. <laughs> I won't tell them. It's fine. Honestly, you are welcome. I extend the hand of friendship to you. Thank you very, very much. That's fine. Uh, for example, the gift I bought you, the gift I bought you today, to make you feel welcome in yes, the house. Yes, yes, thank what you. What did I buy you? You bought me some food. Yeah, some poppadoms. Yes, you bought me I some bought you to peppered make, poppadoms. To make you feel welcome, because I understand your culture. <laughs> thank you. And I've, I've nothing against you. <laughs> and, I, and I've allowed you to come to my house. But even, even though the, the curtains are twitching next door, <laughs> everyone's seeing you coming in, they're all worried about the house prices and things, but I've, I've allowed you to come into my house. Yes. Come into my house and, and be, be welcomed here. Thank you. Very, you. No, it's much appreciated. I've bought you some of your food. My food? <laughs> my food? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't touch it myself. But I've bought you some of your food and I've made you feel very, very welcome. Well, I, I really do appreciate it. Yeah, so that's what today is about. That's what the show right. today is about. It's about, it's about, it's about making Raji feel welcome <laughs> in his adopted home. <laughs> so this is all about me. This yeah, right, yeah, definitely. <laughs> this, this show today is going to be all about you. I think that'd be a good... Everybody knows me. Everybody knows Ray Peacock. I don't need to explain myself at all. I don't need to introduce myself or anything. But not many people know you, Raji. You know, very low profile. Not many people know you. Thank little, you. Little Raji James. He used to be on EastEnders. But ruined it. So we're gonna we're gonna chat to you today. I'll you know I'll talk to you. I'll get the best from you. Okay. What sort of stuff do you want to cover then? Whatever you want. Um, um, I don't know. Well, that's that's exactly that's what the problem is with this podcast. We should have written stuff down that we were going to talk about. <laughs> this is pre-planning, you see. This is, is that what that's called? We should have done some pre-planning for this, but as it is, and they won't know the people listening. No. You know, just the three of them. And you know, they, they won't know that we've not planned anything. We'll, we're professionals, Raji. We'll wing, we'll wing this. We haven't got Steve. God rest his soul, probably by now. Well, but we haven't got Steve. But I'm sure that we can more than more than adequately. We can do this, Raji. I'm I'm a hundred percent committed to this. You came here, nobody. You're going on a star. <laughs> <laughs> You're a very kind man, Ray. Thank you. Oh, that's an ice cream, man. Let's get an ice cream. Come on. <laughs> Come on, so you were up all night last night, yes, which is your, your I'm, excuse. I'm, I'm still awake now. I got up yesterday, uh, I believe, around two o'clock in the afternoon. So what were you doing all night? Listening to a baby crying. Yeah, but you didn't just sit there. I mean, were you in bed the whole time, no, sitting no, no, there no, listening? No, I tried to go to bed at one point. I'll tell you what I did. I was on MSM for a while. Right. But there was nobody there. So that was my first worry bit, because you're normally on MSN. And because, because you weren't on MSN, I was like, shit, he's genuinely gone to bed. Which I actually hadn't. Had you not? No. Well, where were you? I was watching Spider-Man. Oh, okay. You were watching Spider-Man at 2 in the morning? Yeah. Oh, a pirate copy? No. 
That's what you said. Well, so what cinema were you watching Spider-Man 3 at? No, I... At 2 in the morning, what cinema were you watching Spider-Man? Answer the fucking question. No, sometimes I get copies of films through, either through BAFTA or through uh, friends from... Would you, who, would you listen to yourself? Who do reviews and things. BAFTA and friends... Oh, Jonathan Ross. Did Jonathan Ross send you a copy of it? Jonathan Ross isn't one of my friends. Is he not? No, I'm not. I thought Jonathan Ross was friends with everybody that was marginally famous. No, Jonathan Ross is a good friend of a friend. I'm looking forward to being friends with Jonathan Ross one day. I'm sure you will be. Anyway, I was on MSN but nobody was on there. Normally there's people on MSN I can have a little chat to. Literally nobody on last night and I was worried because you weren't there. Because you normally are there. Yeah. And we normally have a, a, a little chat later. We do. Right? You're normally drunk. I'm not normally drunk. Well, in my opinion, you sound like you're drunk. You, How can you, I sound you on read, MSN? You read drunk. I'm not a very good typer. I, I particularly the other night when we were on MSN and you said to me, you actually typed in, are you at your computer now? Yeah. Look, you could have been we somewhere were, we else. We were on MSN. Yes, but what I meant was you could have been on another computer somewhere. I thought you'd been at a gig or something, so I was thinking maybe you were somewhere else. <laughs> like, I don't know, a, in a hotel or an internet cafe or something. But I'd have still been on my computer. Well, not necessarily. Some hotel rooms have computers built into their telly things. Not, not the hotels I stay in. My well, the ones that I've stayed in do. Well, the hotels that I stay in are uh, posh. I think you might find it's no, the, the other way around. No, the hotels that I stay in know that you would have your own laptop. Okay. And so I don't feel the need to patronise you by putting a fucking a Playmobil keyboard attached to your telly. It's not. And look, charge you seven quid to have one game of a PS2 game. I wouldn't know because I, I normally someone else is paying my bills. But yeah, that's I mean, me too. Me too. When I stay at hotels, I stay at all the posh ones. Have you heard of Travel Lodge? Yes. Yes, I stay at the Travel yes. Lodge every now and again. So Have you heard of Days Inn? No. I stay at the Days Inn every now and again. We've got a lovely yellow sign. Is that a big exclusive? Range of hotels. Days in, yeah. I've stayed, I've stayed at loads of days in. I got snowed in at days in once. It wasn't Christmas time because there was a Christmas tree in the lobby. So yeah. that, so that literally yeah, was, was in days Cardiff. in because you were in, and it was snowing. Yeah, I got snowed in, but, but it was so alright. You, you had to stay there. in. No, I got out there. Days. Right. I got out there alright. So then. you had days in. Yeah, I understand that, Raji. So getting back to where you were, yes. which was you were you were on your MSN, no yeah. MySpace. I was on MSN. You were on MSN. I, I went onto MySpace because it, right. I, I put the MySpace. I recently put the MySpace thing up for this podcast. So ah, okay. what I did was I invited all my hundreds of friends from my my normal MySpace account, myspace.com right. forward slash Ray Peacock. Yeah. I invited all those. People. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. What by? Your sellotapes coming off. Oh, it's okay. Don't worry about that. That's <laughs> quite cool. Um, <laughs> I think you need to explain you know the sellotape. That, you know that this isn't a vodcast, don't you? <laughs> Wait, it's not cellar tape, actually. It's, it's surgical tape, right? <laughs> Can you just explain I'm what you I'm going to explain it! Fucking hell! And I apologise for my language, but I'm, I'm going to swear as much as I possibly can at this. I've got this brilliant wire microphone that's basically attached to my head. Um, by? By surgical tape, like they use in the theatre. It's theater. not really surgical tape, though, is it? This is like what they do at the West End. I think they might use something other than common or garden they, they, sellotape. They put it through your hair, but because I've got so much hair at the moment, I can't do it. So I've got to have it attached to the side of my cheek. What West tape. End show have you ever seen that had someone with Phantom that? Phantom of the Opera. With sellotape? He had something wrong with his face. <laughs> <laughs> there was definitely something on his face. Uh, I, was, I was up in the gods, I couldn't see properly, but I, he had something definitely. <laughs> there was it's definitely. coming up again. It is, it's because you're making me, you're making me sweat. I think it looks quite cool. Do you? Yeah, I've not looked in the mirror. No. Well, it, it doesn't look cool. Well, don't say that. Don't undermine me like that. I'm not undermining it. It just it looks like... No, no, no. The first rule of feeling good about yourself, don't let your minions undermine you. Right. Maintain your authority at all times. So if you would come in here... I mean, you shouldn't even be in this country anyway. But if you, but if you to come in here, I love it. I love it when I fucking love when the casual racism, when the jokey casual racism, when it actually gets to you. I can see it in your eyes. I can see something from your past just fucking flash before your eyes, and you go, "No, that's not funny." I don't do that. You do, Roger. I take it very well. Uh, anyway, because anyway. I know you don't really mean it. I don't. I don't. No, you I don't. don't really understand racism. I don't see colour, mate. No. Which why I'm fucked at traffic lights. <laughs> See that? I just made that up. So I transferred all the all the friends oh, from right. my MySpace. Not not all of them, obviously. But, you know, you find you end up having some friends on MySpace that you don't really want. Them. Well, I don't approve them in the first place. Then you do it the best way, because I do approve them, and then don't like them very much, and then delete them. So you you sent a message to people about the. the, no, I, the I I invited them through the Ray Peacock podcast to join the the podcast MySpace. Yeah. So I did that. That took fucking hours. That took a long time. What took so long? I, I will be saying fuck an awful lot during this podcast. Well, that's alright. I can edit it out. I don't edit it out. No, I've waited for this opportunity. I used to have a real radio show. 
I used to do a real radio show, and that was part of the problem. I was so badly behaved on there, and so egomaniacal and fucking prima donnaish. It's because I was constantly having to bite my tongue from swearing. But sh I mean, surely there's going to be audience people who, who aren't going to appreciate sort of constant swearing. So we've got to be aware well, of that. I constantly swear, but I will say fuck every now and again. Fuck, fuck, fucking. I might say cunt every now and again. I don't think you should, that's definitely a word you shouldn't use. Well, people don't like the word cunt. But no, I, I think but that's I, very offensive. No, but why? I just think it is. Right, we well, you don't even know, do you? And I also think that I say cunt in a, quite a, a, a sexy way. I think I How get, can you possibly? I think I get away with the word cunt. I don't think, well, yeah, but that's like you no, thinking you look good now. No, but most people go cunt. This is, this is no, all no, in your no, head. Listen, listen, most people go cunt or cunt, but I go cunt. I think it sounds quite sexy. Cunt. Anyway, we're going to stop. Cannot believe that you cut me off this flow. Well, I had to go to toilet. I was doing my yeah, go to toilet. Raj, yeah, do poo. <laughs> Look, there's a certain. Raj, do poo. Can no, I ask you a question? Did you break my toilet when you're up there then? No, but I heard a big bang when you're up. That's because the seat won't stay up. The seat won't stay up. Yeah. Oh, I see. Right, so you're doing away. Yeah. But I was in the middle of I was in the middle of my of saying cunt in a sexy way. But it's not sexy. Oh, Yes, but that wasn't that wasn't the, the way in which you that, were I using it. I reckon that you. people could turn this off when hearing me say that. I think they will. But it's the people that stay that I'm interested in. <laughs> <laughs> I want people to turn it off. The sort of person that would turn that off, I want them to turn it off at that point. Right. I get furious with people that get upset by the word cunt. But you weren't using it in that seductive way when you were first using it. You were oh, using so it as so a swear word. So you're now acknowledging that it is seductive? In your head, I'm acknowledging you think it is. Okay. But you were saying it, it as a swear sexy, word. Yeah. As a swear? As a swear word. Did Ray done a swear? <laughs> <laughs> Ray but, done a swear. He said really naughty bad words. But you said that you were going to swear more and, and then you started using the C word. I'm not, I'm not saying, oh, I'm going to swear more. I'm making that decision. I'm just acknowledging the fact that I probably will swear an awful lot in this podcast. But I don't see why fuck didn't bother you, but cunt got to you. Because it, I, I, I think it's, it's slightly more offensive and I think more people find it offensive. Yeah, but do you know why you think that? Why? You've been programmed to think that. You don't even know why you find it offensive. Well, You've got no idea why you find it offensive. Well, it's 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 just more people find right, it offensive. You know what? I'm gonna be quiet for thirty seconds. I'm gonna give you thirty seconds grace where you can explain to me why it's offensive, starting now. Well, ge um, generally, I think it's because um, it's actually very specific to a female part of a body, you know, part of a female's body, and therefore it's specifically insulting and <laughs> using a term that is. What's essentially, on what's on telly? <laughs> but you know what I mean, because it's, it's not like it's. See, see, fuck is is a process. Fuck is is my, is. Text messages here. Fuck is something that's you know it's an action. It's a it's a process. It's not an actual specific part of a female's body. And we're through. That's your thirty seconds. So that was your reason, was it? Generally, that was your reasoning. Well, yeah. What a brilliant argument you put together there. <laughs> it's offensive because it's a part of a female's body. Well, it is though. Do you find the word? Do you find tits offensive? But they're not used in a if negative... If I say tits, do you find that offensive? But you don't, though. But the thing is, people don't use it in that way, do they? You're getting on my tits. Well, getting on your tits is Tit off. <laughs> but, well, you know... Get, but, yeah, exactly, you don't say tit off, do I you? I just did. Yeah, but you don't... <laughs> tit off? <laughs> I say that all the time. <laughs> you don't. I fucking do, I'm always saying that. You've never said it. I said it to an ice cream man the other day. You've never said you that ever. You didn't give me a flake and I went tit off. No, you didn't. I did? I don't believe you. Well, you weren't there, so you don't know. But you well, can say true. that about anything. All right, then. Well, let's say, I want to start saying tit off. <laughs> is that offensive? No, because it's... But that's a part of a lady's body. But it's nonsensical, the fact that you're saying that. So is cunt. But, no, but cunt... When you're saying cunt, it's got nothing to do with a lady's front bottom. No, but society has kind of accepted that that is a genuine swear word. And Fuck society. Well, Fuck it in the arse. Well, oh, yeah. I said arse. Well, that's that's right. Like a lady has. Well, both... You have one, too. Yeah. I might have a cunt. No. I might. <laughs> you don't. I might do. But you don't. You don't know people that have slept with me. You're they so might vouch for it. They might vouch for the fact that I've got a cunt. Well, I know a person who slept with you. I know loads of people who slept with me. Well, obviously. I'm getting confused now. I know. Look how easy it is. <laughs> I don't even have to construct a proper argument. <laughs> if you can't convince him, just confuse him. It's literally <laughs> as simple as that. Raji, do you find the word cunt offensive now? Yeah. No! <laughs> no, you don't! I do! You don't! I genuinely do. Oh, tit <laughs> I think what I'm going to do, because mm -hmm. Steve isn't here, is I'm going to try and phone him, just so he's at least in it, 
Okay. Just for a moment. I don't know how much credit I've got on my phone. Some, uh, I've got him on speakerphone. Okay. And will you tell him that we're on pod casting? Yeah, I'll tell him. I don't, but I don't think by the sound of this he's going to answer. What do you reckon? But he's not genuinely in hospital. Can you imagine if I make that joke and it turns out... Peter, please leave a message after the woman says, if you want to re-record your message, press 1 at any time. If you want to re-record your message, press 1 at any time. Yeah. It's Steve Morrison, hello. I'm just calling you because I'm here with uh, Raji James and we're currently recording a podcast and I thought I'd ring you up and see if you wanted to be involved in it on speakerphone. I am recording this for the podcast now. Um, so you have spoken on the podcast. Well, his voice is on the message. His voice is on the message, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So yeah, so if you want to be on the podcast, ring me back. Goodbye then. There we go. So he was on it. That's a successful segment. If all went according to plan, my Doctor Who episode that I'm in, starring yeah. in, would have been on two days ago. Is it starring or featuring, would you say? Mm, I'd say starring. I mean, if you were really, really well known, yeah. I mean, more than you are. Yeah, good, then, well recovered. Yeah, then... then Fumble! No, he's got it! Then it'd be, um, would you say it's a cameo? I think it would be a cameo if I was famous. Yeah. Um, as it is, I'd say it's maybe a glorified extra. I know you're not supposed to say the word extra, but I think for this part... Supporting artists. No, I'm going to go with extra. <laughs> OK. <laughs> That's how disparaging I'm going to be about the size of my role. But your, your, the, the name of your character is mm. really... It's quite an important name, isn't it? Was it was called Banto. You can say, oh, of course, because it's been on, so you can say it. You can say it now, it was called Banto, yeah. And Banto was something really important from a previous Apparently series. Apparently so, not a previous series, from a radio show or something like that. Or an audio, an audio book, I don't even know what it is. Well, see, what you need there is you need one of the guys that I've met, like, at the conventions, because they know everything, these people. Yes, they do, don't they? They know Those absolute, people at the conventions. They know everything there is to know about Doctor Who. They tell and, you... And just that! But just that, yeah. everything there is to know about Doctor Who, that's it. Yeah. Do they know anything about girls? Mm, not really. Well, some of them they... are with girls. I mean, some of them are, are in couples, you know, at, at, they go to the conventions Are together. they married? Well, I don't know, I didn't ask them. But... No, they're not. Is it, strictly speaking, a couple, if you've just found somebody of the opposite sex that also likes Doctor Who? Well, yeah, it's still a couple. I mean, couples couples get together because they have mutual interests. I, you know, I don't care about getting married or anything like that. I'm not a big, uh, I don't yeah. particularly want to get married or anything. But if I did get married, I don't want my best man to be a cyberman. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? I'm not yeah. sure. I'd okay. want to do it in, with a degree of tradition, maybe with a Kaylee, something like that. <laughs> I certainly don't want canine bearing the rings. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> with respect. <laughs> Fair enough. I wonder if martial ceremonies would be a, a situation like that. Like, who, who'd be actually marrying them? Probably Davros. Yeah, it'd have to be someone, <laughs> wouldn't it? <Or laughs> Davros would be brilliant. <laughs> Davros was the only thing that ever used to scare me in Doctor Who. Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, the thing about the, the, the guys at the conventions is, yeah. is that, that, you know, yes, they know everything there is to know about yeah. every series of Doctor Who ever. Let's be kind about them. They're not cases. No, they're not nut cases. They're just they're just people who have found damaged. No, they they just they found something that retarded. They are, no, they found something that they're really interested in. I mean, one of the guys I met there actually wasn't there just because it was Doctor Who. He was there, and this was quite a big thing for me, ego wise, because he was actually there specifically to meet me. Because he, he arrived. Which should have made you suspicious for a kickoff. <laughs> yeah, possibly. The thing was. Was right? he from the CSI? <laughs> CSA. Whatever it's called. Yeah. CSI, that's quite a senior investigation. Yeah, that's another one. Yeah, exactly. No, but this, this, this guy, um, he actually arrived. I mean, I'm sitting at this table. Could we get, there was a different session where we had to sit and just sign autographs for people that wanted them. At 20 quid ago? No, we, uh, we weren't charging because they, they had like three signatures included in their entrance price or something. And you just and to, people used you as one of those? Yeah, apparently. Wow. So, well, not apparently, they did. But this one particular guy um, came up and they had a limit as well. You could only get like two or three items signed. So, so, so some people had come up with my little Doctor Who card and they say, can you sign that? Do you remember that day at the motorway services when I was with you and I tried to pay that girl for our shopping <laughs> with your Doctor Who battle card? Yeah. <laughs> and she very nearly accepted it. Yeah. But anyway, this chap who was there specifically well, yeah, to see you. This guy was there to see me and he actually brought with him a t-shirt from the bill. Oh, and you were in the bill. I used to be in the bill. The popular BBC, uh, ITV, ITV, sorry. ITV police uh, men and drama. women thing. Yep. Yeah. So he'd arrived with this t-shirt and on this t-shirt was all of the signatures of everyone that was in the show at the same time that I was in it, right? And it was right. the entire cast, except for me, right? So that Raji James hard to get. 
well, hard to find signature. Yeah, well, specifically on this T-shirt. Right. See. So I can't, for, obviously for the life of me, I can't remember why I didn't uh, sign that T-shirt at that time. He'd probably been sat by then. Who knows. Yeah. Um, but so he'd been waiting years, it turns out, he said to me, he'd been waiting years to, to get me uh, and to get my autograph on this Raji, T-shirt. This conversation started with you defending... Yeah. That they weren't all nutters. Well, you then went on to tell me a story about a man who'd waited years not to find his destiny in love, not to make his first million. He'd waited years to meet you, to get your scroll on a t-shirt, Raji. And, and you, were def you were saying, no, they're not all nutters. Well, One bloke waited years to get my autograph on a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe that wasn't a very good example. No. I mean, did I win that argument? <laughs> <laughs> I just won that argument. <laughs> They're all nutters. No, um, well, endearing as they are. Look, do you know what? I'm, yeah. not even, I'm not even knocking them. Even if they can get married and all that, fucking fair play to them. Yeah. I'm not knocking them. I'm a big Star Wars fan. I'm into all that. I wouldn't go to a convention. I don't think I'd go to a convention to be at a convention. No. Like even because I've been in Doctor Who, I, I don't think I'd really want to go to a convention and, and be one of the people there. Particularly not with the size of the part that I had. But I would love to come with you. I'd love to come and watch you at one. But that's just because you think I'll embarrass myself. It's because I know you'll embarrass yourself. Yeah. It's not. There's no think about it. But I don't mean to. You get giddy. I think maybe I did. That's what happens, you get giddy. Yeah. If you go on stage, you get giddy. What happened at the end of your convention, Raji? Yeah, all right. Uh, what happened at the end of your convention? Yeah, I did, well, there's this bit at the end where everyone is sort of um, paged onto the stage. All, know, the, all, all the celebrities? Yeah, all the sort of convention guests. Yep. Uh, and, and everyone that's come to the convention are all in this like big school hall <laughs> looking at the stage. You Special know. school hall? No, but no, it's just wherever. Just before they put them all back in the variety sunshine <laughs> coach, they just, they let them all sit in the school hall, they give them, you know, spotted dick that oh, sort of thing biscuits yeah. um, so I was there waiting and because and I was sort of low on the they're there to get one last glimpse of their heroes yeah and it's yeah. just to sort of say to everyone you know thanks for coming mm -hmm. blah 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 and these were our special guests today so everyone sort of had gone on one at a time and as each person went up um, like um, Colin Baker not Tom Baker but Colin Baker was uh -huh. there so he kind of went up and they said you know a big hand for Colin Baker and he went up and took the mic and said, right, everyone, thank you very much, you know, it's been a great day, blah, blah, blah. And then the next person, and then the next person. So I'm standing there, and I was about the fifth person to go on stage, and by yeah. the time it was getting to me, they were about to call my name out, and I was thinking, oh, you know, Paul McGann's just gone on, and oh, he said this, and, and I was trying to... I remember you saying to me, when you yeah. were preemptively defending it, you said to me, by the time it was my turn, Everybody that had been on had said everything there was possibly Poss yeah. funny to say. That's right, yeah. No, yeah. I take issue with that anyway. But No, but in my head, that's right. what it felt like. Uh, so, that. So, I'm, so I'm standing there and then... Panicking. Yeah, thinking, oh my God, what am I going to say? What yet gonna giddy. Say? <laughs> Panicking, yet giddy. <laughs> yep, yeah. yeah, go on. And then, and then they call my name out. On your trot. So he bounces, <laughs> here he comes. So while I run, you know, doing that sort of thespian run... Like <laughs> Kenneth Branagh at the end of it. <laughs> yeah. When he's done the show, how he runs on and just wipes his brow. Now, next thing I know, they're, they're handing me the microphone and I, and I just... I Their just, first mistake. <laughs> yeah. So, so... Um, Sort of a little bit desperate for something to say, mm -hmm. I kind of looked at the audience and, and I just sort of said, Hey, you're all mental! And that there, what yeah. we just did, that <laughs> silence, <laughs> must have been eerily like deja vu to you that then, because that's exactly what happened when it, you called them all mental. It was, I didn't, I tried to recover it. Yeah, how did you recover it? Well, I tried to recover it. By, by saying? By, <laughs> by saying, but in a good way. Yeah, there we go. And, and what happened then? I, I imagine there were lots of sighs of relief, cheers and things for you. No. Just still the it silence. I imagine that the people there are probably still in silence, <laughs> probably have been since you did it. Open mouth, yeah. wide eyed, staring. Yeah. Well, you see, I tried to explain to you afterwards, when you were telling me this story back, and I don't think you really understood the gravity of the situation. I no. don't think you understood quite what a faux pas you'd made. I did miss Because, it. right, the thing is, right, first off, the word mental is now frowned upon, okay? Yeah, yeah. In, in this age of political correctness, and you could argue it's political correctness gone mad. You could do, and, or you could say, well, no, it's fair, fair enough, really. <laughs> but you see, I, I, don't care for, I don't care for any of that. But the word mental now yeah. is stigmatised, okay? You can't use the word mental, right? No. Particularly particularly when some of them are. Yeah. That's particularly when you can't do it. You, it's impressive in many ways what you did, because you went on, on the left wing, <laughs> walked to the middle of the stage, lost half your fan base in two sentences, and then walked off to the right wing again. Yeah. I mean, it fucking hats off to you, really. <laughs> Look, I tell you, I've had shit gigs, right? As a comedian, I've had gigs where I've gone on there and they fucking hated me, and they're like, oh, this bloke's shit, whatever. But I have never gone onto a stage in front of people who like me already. That's the important <laughs> thing. They actually like me before, they know me and like me before I get there. 
and then yeah. within two sentences changed their mind. <laughs> Do you know, it is a, it's a genuine achievement. A genuine achievement. <laughs> do you get giddy? I when do, you, when I you get a head stage, rush. you get giddy. Illustrated no better than the time when we both did the East Dulwich quiz, yeah. which is a quiz that runs every Thursday. It's, it's, it's a celebrity pub quiz, they call celebrity it. Celebrity pub quiz. They have celebrities, they also have comedians as well. Yes. And um, hosting the quiz. On some occasions they have specials where they'll have... Uh, not special people, but special. No, not special people. Although it could be argued when you did it. <laughs> yeah. um, on some occasions, they have they have like a, a, a couple of celebrities, and a, like I've done quite a few of these. So yeah. where, uh, so and so will do round one. Um, I think on the night we did it. Norman Lovett did not did, did, right. did round one. I did round two because I was the non celebrity, yes. but also the best at doing the quiz. Um, and round three was you can sell. Yes. And uh, at the time I was doing the character, I was doing a character, a Yorkshire man, a shouty Yorkshire man. So I'd gone on and been very abrasive and very angry with them and stuff, playing the character and they played along with it. And you said to me, before you went on, because you'd never done the quiz before, no. you said to me, what shall I do? What shall, you know? and, and I said, just do what I did, just go and call them all cunts. And, and, and you did. <laughs> That's what, and you, you, you went, I, I genuinely, it, 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 was, yeah. it was a joke, it was a joke, I was doing it, I was being flippant towards you, but you, you were so giddy within the moment that you forgot that and you did No, I didn't forget it, I, just, right. I just took the instruction and went with Roger, it. You walked onto that stage <laughs> and called them after being as that. You were, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Roger James. You walked on. The first thing you said, you're all cunts. That, the first thing you said, they, they don't know you, they don't no. know what it's about, they have no idea. At one point in the evening, you said, you're all the people that wrote to points of view complaining about the Brown family on EastEnders. They hadn't done that, they, they were scared no. of you, Roger. <laughs> I was trying to be sort of ironic and funny. But, but did, it came across but possibly you know, as being that I really meant that. But you were on that stage for about 20 minutes. Did you not notice when you were on that stage that perhaps people were going, what, what's wrong with this man? No, I think that's where the giddy thing comes in. Right, OK. Gid giddiness and alcohol never mix particularly well, do they? Apparently not. No, they don't. It's a lesson that we're going to need to teach you at some point. But, in fairness, when you did call more cunts, you did get a laugh. I did. Literally. I did. A laugh from me <laughs> at the back of the room. That's all there was. Was me at the back of the room holding my sides, fucking tears streaming down my face, laughing whilst everyone else just stared at you. So you got a laugh. So you, you, you're going in the right direction. First time and I got a laugh. You got a laugh, but from me. Who told you what to do? You're all cunts, you fucking idiots. <laughs> Last night, yep. when I was in my office in my house, yes. it's not an office, it's a spare room, but say it's an office, it sounds better, and you weren't on MSN, fast asleep that you were, or watching Spider-Man 3, illegally, allegedly, I was, as the baby was crying, you know, as I was trying to stay awake, <laughs> with that baby lulling me, <laughs> gen gently making me fall asleep with that lovely crying, do you know what, it got so bad, the baby crying, that I genuinely, this is sort of fucking child I am in my head, yeah. uh, about six this morning, I actually prayed for the Goblin King <laughs> to come and take the baby away. You know, like in Labyrinth. No. I thought maybe David Bowie would turn up and just take it. But, no joy there. That's you being delirious. Well, like, perhaps to an extent. And I am now, because I'm still fucking awake. I remembered something. I hadn't really forgot it, but I hadn't... I, I think I might have buried it in my head. Right. You know that they had all the rugby league games in Cardiff a few weeks ago? Apparently so, yes. Well, they did. They played all the rounds of Super League at the Millennium Stadium. Right. They? So they played three matches a day. What, the, the same teams? No, 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 no. Well, in a given round, right. there's six matches. Okay. There's 12 teams play each other, okay? Right, right, right. So they right. played three matches on the Saturday, yeah. three matches on the Sunday, yeah. but it was called Millennium Magic Weekend. It was a big success from all accounts. Okay. Uh, they just went and did one in, in Cardiff to try and expand the game out. And this is rugby league? This is rugby league, proper rugby, right. not rugby union, okay. which is uh, more commonly known as girls rugby. Okay. <laughs> girls rugby, or, or, or spaz rugby, <laughs> as some people call it. Any game of rugby... In inverted commas, where you get the ball and go, oh shit, and kick it. Right. So you don't get tackled. That's not rugby. Okay? So they don't kick it in, in the... Well, they kick it, but not just to stop themselves getting tackled. Okay. Right, I don't know this game at all. It's so. a fuck... Well, honestly, it's the best game in the world. I'm really proud to be associated with it in any way, shape or form. But, anyway, when we were on our way back from Cardiff, stopped off at the services, and I went to the toilet to do a toilet. <laughs> I've got that from you. Yeah, Raj in the toilet. <laughs> so I went into the cubicle. Now I've noticed an increase in in uh, public toilets, or maybe I've just not noticed it before, but I've noticed recently. Yeah. A lot of holes in walls, like just little tiny holes, little spy holes, 
in the, in the walls and okay. toilets. An awful lot of that seems to be going on, particularly in service stations. And I go to yeah. a lot of service stations because of my job, I'm travelling up and down the country doing gigs. Mm -hmm. So I go into a lot of public toilets. This is starting to sound suspicious. Wait till you hear what fucking happened. In, in the particular toilet I was in, there was uh, what is commonly referred to as a glory hole. Okay, which is uh, a hole, maybe, how, what's that in diameter? Maybe three About, inches? Yeah. Three inches diameter in, in the wall. Now, I'm not naive, I know what glory hole is. It's where gentlemen go into toilets and pop their fella through the little hole and... Uh, what? So whoever's on the other side will do whatever they do to it. Come so on. I'm in the toilet, okay? Right. Uh, doing a proper toilet. To my left, there's the paper towel dispenser, the, the toilet tissue dispenser. Yes. To my right is the glory hole, okay? No. Now I sat down, I had my arm up on the paper towel dispenser, and I put my hand kind of over the glory hole. Right. Because right? I was aware that it was there. But then, anyway, as, as my uh, motions went on, yeah, uh, I kind of forgot about the glory hole. It, it wasn't concerning me anymore. Now, I did something by accident. What did you do? Right, and what? I've since found out. What did you? Well, do? why? Why I tell you? I've since found out what I what my major mistake was. Right, but it was an accident. When I was sitting there, absent-mindedly, I put two fingers through the glory hole, which I've since found out is a sign. No. To anybody who's in. It's like a welcome. Exactly. Thing. That's exactly what it is. It, it's, no it's saying way. I, I, I accept it or whatever. Okay. Uh -huh. So I'm in the and, and then uh, I was doing what you do after you've done a toilet. Right. Um, I turned to my left, Yeah. got some tissue paper out, went for a wipe, looked to the right. Yeah. What greeted me, Raji? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, I'm stay scared. with me to my dying day. I'm scared. Uh, a, a proper one. <laughs> uh, properly um, <laughs> proud. It was proud. No. It was as proud as could be. And it, Fucking massive. No. I'll, I'll give it that. It was fucking massive in fairness. Because I'm, I'm not like I'm quite uh, like I'm, uh, I'm the insecurities that I think a lot of men have. I'm not. I'm not. I've not got very big money particularly. I'm but, rubbish on the slack. Right. I'm all right at the business end of the season, but still, <laughs> but still nothing special. Still not, like nothing special by any means at all. It's a, it's quite a major thing for me. It's quite a major um, insecurity that I have. Right. Um, but I think a lot of men do. But yeah. So anyway, I'm sitting there. It's the closest I've ever been to a man's Facing. penis. Well, not facing it exactly. It was no, but it was off to the right. <gasps> so it's the, it's the closest I've, I've ever been to one, other than my own. You know, I can only get like yeah, that near to my own. You but, can't see that, but, but and I've what, tried to get nearer. What must this other person be thinking? Well, because I put my fingers through to accept it, so it came through, and I didn't know what to do. Because I'm, I, I'm, you didn't touch. You well, didn't. Look, I am big enough to admit. It crossed my mind for a moment. <gasps> oh just, my god! Well, just for a moment, because I'm not, I would consider myself a heterosexual man. Historically heterosexual. But I'm also, I think it would be fair to say, relatively, um... Adventurous? Adventurous. I'm, 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 I'm yeah, I'm, I'm not. I thought are, that's where you were going. Yeah. See things don't around. faze me in bed, you know, I'm not, I'm, I will try stuff out, I yeah. will try, you know. I don't think there's anything I've not done, um, with a female partner. Right. I've not been with a male partner. And I'm not attracted to men. I find the idea Where's of Where's this men... going? Because well, you've now had this situation. Don't panic. Let me just tell you. I'd... Wait till you fucking hear what did happen. Right, I'm not attracted to men. I couldn't kiss a man, for example. No. I don't no. find men attractive. Okay. But this is what I've always said. If you're horny enough, you will fuck anything. Now, luckily yeah. on this day, I wasn't horny at all. Right. I was just having a poo, Raji. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I wasn't really, you know. It, it crossed my mind for a moment. Just go, like, fuck it. Like, just do it. Just so it's a box ticks. But I didn't do it. What I did do... And I have got no idea why I did this, okay? Yeah. Genuinely no idea why I did it. I've not told anyone this. And now I'm telling everybody. <laughs> I, I don't know why I did it. What did I you? wrapped it in toilet paper. <laughs> 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 I don't know why. You did what? I got toilet paper out of the, <laughs> yeah. out of the thing on the left. And wrapped it, wrapped it around the, the, the man's todger on the right. And then just <laughs> left the cubicle. <laughs> And I don't know why. So could he get it back out? Yeah, it... I didn't fucking put a tourniquet on it. I wasn't. <laughs> I didn't lock it. I'll teach you a lesson, young man. I don't know why I did it. I don't know what. Have you just done a poo? I had done a poo, yes. But so did I you wash your hands. Do you know what? On this occasion, I didn't. <gasps> I was. At... I don't know what's worse. Oh yeah, like fucking. <laughs> yeah, how? What? And you didn't wash your hands afterwards. <laughs> but I th and then I thought, what if he stayed there waiting? Yeah, what if he, he didn't realise I'd gone? And then the next person came into the cubicle. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and it was it, it was either gift wrapped for him, or they thought that was the toilet paper dispenser. Can you imagine if you're pulling toilet paper, there's a fucking cock underneath it. It was Maybe. a big one, though. Maybe. Have you got a big willy? No. 
I've got I'm like, only little. But you're only a little bloke, aren't you? Yeah, I'm only a little bloke, but I'm quite big, yeah. so I've got, I'm quite muscly. Yeah, do you think? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm muscly underneath. Um, how big is a penis, though, normally? I don't know. Because I'm not kidding you, his was like, I'm not even going to, I'll leave this to people's imagination, but his was literally like that. How big is that? That's probably about eight or nine inches. That's more than eight or nine inches. I'm eight or nine inches, right? Well, that's an inch. <laughs> is he fuck? That's an inch. Is that what you're saying? That's an inch. Okay. That, that is... Well, it was, it was yay big. Wow. Massive. And it, and it was... I think that's getting near a foot. But the thing is, he stuck his todger through. Yeah. Next thing he knows... He's Thrust got, it through. He's got some kind of sensation going exactly. on. Exactly. Can I you imagine, imagine it? if it was toilet paper, it's quite soft and, and a bit of rustling. So maybe he thought you were preparing him for maybe something. Maybe he thought he'd drop... Maybe he thought, oh, fucking hell, I've dropped up. This is the Andrex puppy. Can you imagine if he was really, really aroused? You know when you get to the point where you're really aroused and literally anything could set you off? Can you imagine okay. if I'd wrapped that round him and he'd... And then it, and it that, had started. That had done it. I wow. don't know. Where, I don't know where I'd have looked. What would you have done? I, I, I you'd have fucking sucked it. You'd have, <laughs> you'd have been done with it. <laughs> you'd have been gagging on it within <laughs> seconds. <laughs> I know this is meant to be anonymous, but I used to be on these vendors. <laughs> <laughs> One of the Ferraris, <laughs> and at that moment, it had gone soft. <laughs> In your I, mouth. Sometimes I really don't like you. I'll live with that. I think that'll do. Yeah. For the first one. Well. That's enough, isn't it? I think so. Have you had fun? I've had lots and lots of fun. <laughs> That's all that matters to me, Raji. Oh. To see your little smiling face. Thank you. What have you learned today? Um, I think I've got to be careful if ever I get to do another convention. I'll I don't care what. I don't think you will get to do another convention. No. Now you've, upset, now you've upset all the, in your word, mentals. Yeah. Um, you've upset the mentals, well, obviously haven't you? have to be a bit more careful what I say in public. And, yeah. and um, to me. I think that's actually the biggest lesson. I have to be very careful what I end up telling you, because you always use it against me. But you know that I'll get it out of you anyway. Well, maybe that should be... I right. have Jedi powers over you, Roger. Well, yeah. I don't think my agent's caught onto that yet. Don't worry about your agent. He'll I'm, be curious. No, it's like I told you, I'm a Jedi. People say to me, how come he's your friend? How come you're friends with each other? And I'm like, because I've got powers over him. Yeah. I completely, I control your mind. Well, and I do, do you know what, if, if I could have a celebrity friend, if I could choose any celebrity friend, if I was given carte blanche to choose one, He's choose a celebrity, Kate. carte blanche, oh. don't, don't act divvy, No. if I could choose a celebrity friend and I didn't know you, I would still choose you. I think you're a brilliant celebrity friend to have. I think I should be saying thank you. Yeah, thank I'm you. I'm not sure. Thank you, Mr. Peacock, you should be saying. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Peacock. That's all right, little Roger Jones, you used to be on EastEnders but ruined it. Um, well, so, but that's what we've learned. I've learned, uh, well, I've learned, before I got here, I learned how to gift wrap cocks. That's good. That's, yeah. a, that's a good thing to know. I, I could be known as the cock gift wrapper upper. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you're looking for an unusual Father's Day gift, Father's Day's coming up. You could perhaps, you know, surprise your father with a, with your cock, and I could come around and gift wrap it for you. I mean, I've only, I've only done the one so far <laughs> in my life, but I reckon that if they do a few, I could probably end up putting bows on them and stuff. Ribbons? <laughs> Maybe ribbons. Uh, well, look, that's it for this uh, for this week. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Not you. I'm, oh. I'm, I'm thanking the... Uh, oh, you're talking to the to listener. The, the listener. Yeah, you're being optimistic, aren't you? The <laughs> listener. <laughs> There would have been listeners, but my mum's not got an iPod. <laughs> All it remains for us to do is to thank our friends at jawsall.co.uk for hosting it. Uh, of course, thank you for listening. Uh, the Ray Peacock Podcast is a big enough production produced by Raji James. Fuck knows how, but he, is, he can use a computer. Uh, join us again for the next one. Until then, we shall see you on the beach. Bye-bye. Oh, here's a phone call. Is it? Is it? It's Steve Morrison. It's Steve Morrison. Can we put him on speakerphone? Hello, Steve Morrison. Hello. How are you? You are on the podcast. We're recording right now. I'm on. Who are you doing it with? You're doing it with that black, aren't you? You have doing it with that black, you're right. <laughs>